The Botnet app for Splunk is designed to showcase how you can leverage machine learning to train and build ML models to detect malicious traffic in NetFlow logs originating from bots. The app ships with sample data that is already labeled for you to make exploring much easier. The motivation behind this app is similar to the DGA Analysis app, where we showcase supervised machine learning algorithms to classify network traffic based on behavioral features in the data and demonstrate a fully realized machine learning workflow in Splunk. These features can be derived using statistics or generated by a feature engineering algorithm. As we step through this demonstration of the app, we will make some choices around feature engineering and selection that will have an operational impact on the classification from the models. These trade-offs will vary depending on the amount of data used in the training and the type of algorithm used to generate the model. The background on machine learning section provides the user with some information about the ML terms used in the app and the meanings behind them. For people that are unfamiliar with words like classification and NLP, this dashboard will provide lots of contextual information. As we scroll down the panels, we start to learn more about the use case and some of the features we are going to leverage for determining if a particular network flow is associated with a bot. Provided in the last panel are links to further reading on each of the topics described in the app, and I would suggest leveraging these resources to get a better understanding in areas of machine learning where you need additional guidance or clarification. The Data Analysis and Feature Extraction Dashboard provides a comprehensive overview of the data set and provides a breakdown of the total number of unique flows, type of flow detected, and the label associated with bot flows. This data is aggregated using SPL to provide better features that describe the flow behavior and the most frequently used protocol based on the common ports seen in the flow. The Feature Analysis Dashboard allows you to explore the different features in the dataset and how those features differ between normal traffic and botnet generated traffic. You can also see the distribution of features for botnet traffic to better understand how the values of the features relate to each type of bot. This is valuable as you attempt to gather contextual information about which features are going to be good predictors of specific types of bot activity. As seen on the Data Analysis and Feature Engineering dashboard, the proportion of non-botnet records to botnet records is extremely high. This is likely to produce models that are biased towards predicting non-botnet NetFlow traffic. Therefore, the data set needs to be generated containing an even split of botnet and non-botnet records. The approach we take in the app to create a balanced data set is the application of undersampling. For undersampling, we will remove a random sample of non-botnet records in order to have a more even balance between the two different classes of records. Using this technique, we will remove the samples before we apply any pre-processing and before splitting into training and test data sets. The pre-processing dashboard allows you to select the scaling options, principal component analysis options, whether you wish to remove outliers, and the train test split ratio to be used in the subsequent dashboards. Selecting the checkbox will give you more information on the different pre-processing techniques. On the anomaly detection dashboard, you can train a set of anomaly detection models to baseline normal traffic for each botnet type. The idea here is to train models to understand the behavior of the botnet, whereas in production you would be more likely to train a model to understand the baseline for normal traffic. This anomaly detection model is useful in removing outliers from the data before passing these observations to the classification algorithm. The anomaly detection models can be inspected using the summary dashboard to understand the thresholds being used by the probability density algorithm for each of the numerical fields in our data set. This is useful when you're trying to understand why normal statistical thresholds are failing to detect specific cases. For example, bots that have Gaussian KDE distributions or exponential distributions would generate many false anomalies if a normal bell curve-like distribution was used. The model threshold dashboard allows you to test the thresholds applied to the data in order for you to determine how sensitive you want the anomaly detection model to be to outliers. Smaller values will exclude local outliers, while larger values will include global and local outliers.
The model training dashboard is a classification step where we begin to build models that are predictive of a class of bot. Data is passed to the algorithm after being filtered by our anomaly detection thresholds. The testing dashboard leverages the models that are built to validate how well it is performing against data it was not trained on. This provides us with a picture of precision, recall, accuracy, and F1 scores for each classification algorithm in the machine learning toolkit. It gives us a holistic picture of which algorithm will perform the best given the data in the current state. The recommended algorithm can change depending on variations in your selection and the features and outlier thresholds. The next step dashboard is a dynamic panel that can produce SPL to leverage the models built through the process. This can be used against real data stored in your Splunk instance. Simply select the index where your NetFlow data is stored and determine which algorithm you'd like to use. I suggest using the one that was recommended on the previous panel. Simply paste this SPL into your Splunk search bar to begin detecting potential bots.